This week, Olivia Coleman serves vegan food to London's vulnerable communities. Joaquin Phoenix and Rooney Mara expose factory farms. And Iceland killed its last whale. This is Live Kindly News. Remember to hit the subscribe button, click the bell icon to turn on notifications, and leave your comments below. Last month, Austria closed its last remaining coal-fired power plant. Earlier this year, the new Austrian federal government announced an ambitious sustainability pledge. The country committed to transition to 100% renewable energy sources by 2030 and said it would launch a 1 million photovoltaic roofing program, which are solar panels that convert light to energy. This will help Austria achieve climate neutrality by 2040. Catherine Gutmann, campaign director at Europe Beyond Coal, said in a statement, Austria is ending coal burning while supporting the uptake of renewable energy and the European Green New Deal. She added, This is a great example of the path to healthier, cleaner, and more resilient societies. The coal plant generated Austria's heat and electricity for 34 years. Fossil fuels like coal and gas are non-renewable sources of energy. The process of extracting fossil fuels from the earth is also extremely damaging. According to the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, the largest source of greenhouse gas emissions from human activities in the United States stems from burning fossil fuels for electricity, heat, and transportation. The EPA revealed, electricity production generates the second largest share of greenhouse gas emissions. Approximately 63% of our electricity comes from burning fossil fuels, mostly coal and natural gas. Icelandic whaling company IP Utgard has announced it is ending whaling for good. Whaling is something we can stop here and now, um, and there's absolutely no need for it. It's just a pointless, harmful industry. The company was one of Iceland's last two remaining whaling operations. Gunnar Johnson, managing director of IP Utgard, told the AFP, I'm never going to hunt whales again. I'm stopping for good. Animal rights advocates welcome the news. Whales are mammals and, and they deserve equal respect like us. We are mammals and they deserve the same respect as us. And they maintain an ecosystem and I think we have to respect that ecosystem and nature. So. Fabian McClellan, co-director of international relations at the conservation nonprofit Ocean Care, told Manga Bay, This is indeed terrific news that for a second straight year, vulnerable fin whales will get a reprieve from Havalar HF's harpoons. This said, fin whaling has been suspended in Iceland in the past, only to resume. While it looks promising that whaling in Iceland might stop for good, the temporary cessation of fin whaling must become permanent. Iceland's second whaling firm, Valor, said it was forced to cancel its whale hunt this year due to export problems and social distancing requirements amid the coronavirus pandemic. We have long tradition of eating kale in Iceland and growing kale. So, eat kale, not whale. In 1986, the International Whaling Commission passed a global moratorium on commercial whaling. However, Iceland, which lodged an official objection against the ban, resumed whaling in 2006. No, if the government would ban it, then we, of course, had to stop. But uh, I don't know. For how long do you think you'll continue to whale? Forever. The country has killed more than 1,700 whales since the IWC banned commercial whaling, according to the charity Whale and Dolphin Conservation. There are currently only two other countries that continue to defy the global whaling moratorium, Japan and Norway. Coming up, Joaquin Phoenix and Rooney Mara expose factory farms. Dublin's Trinity College is urging Ireland to ditch meat to reduce global greenhouse gas emissions. Researchers from Trinity College Dublin School of Natural Sciences say that a typical Irish diet is too dependent on unsustainable foods, specifically meat and other animal products, causing health, financial, and environmental problems. These products fuel the animal agriculture sector, which is responsible for 14.5% of emissions. Raising livestock uses approximately 70% of all available agricultural land and is a leading cause of pollution. The new research indicates that major improvements are possible. It specifically highlights the Eat Lancet's Commission's Planetary Health Diet. These guidelines focus on plant-based foods and prioritize nutritionally dense fruits, vegetables, and grains. The studies find that people adopting the planetary health diet are more likely to consume high-quality nutritional foods. It could also reduce Ireland's diet-associated global warming potential by up to 57 percent. The meat industry is also raising concerns in the U.S. Last week, President Donald Trump signed an executive order invoking the Korean War-era Defense Production Act to force meat processing plants to remain operational amid the coronavirus pandemic. 
So uh, the farmers are very happy and the ranchers and the uh, the companies. Smithfield and Tyson Foods are praising the president's order, but many workers are not. The order provides various liability protections that have not been named. An administration official told NBC News. The reason for this EO is there were discussions among certain processing companies, Tyson's for example, to keep only 20% of facilities open. The vast majority of processing plants could have shut down, reducing processing capacity in the country by as much as 80%. At an event in the Oval Office, the president said, yeah, we're working with Tyson. We're going to sign an executive order today, I believe, and that will solve any liability problems. We'll be in very good shape. He added, there's plenty of supply, as you know. It's distribution, and we will probably have that solved today. It was a very unique circumstance because of liability. Now, meat plant workers are pushing back at the president's executive order. I think that Trump's choice to force food plants to stay open is really belittling my life. It's nothing more than another piece of the production line. President Trump is going to say whatever he wants to say, because he's not the one exposing himself. An employee at major meat producer Tyson Foods Iowa plant told CNN Business, All I know is, this is crazy to me, because I can't see all these people going back into work. The worker asked to be referred to as Donald out of fear of losing his job. He is currently recovering from coronavirus. I'm still trying to figure out, what is he going to do? Force them to stay open? Force people to go to work? Fast food restaurant chain Wendy's is facing major beef shortages due to the novel coronavirus outbreak. Big Talk bun. to the manager. It is the manager. Where's the beef? Nearly one in five of the chain's restaurants is not serving beef products. Fast food chain Wendy's becoming the latest company to feel the effects of a pandemic-triggered meat shortage. CNN reports around 1,000 or 18 percent of Wendy's 5,500 U.S. restaurants are not serving any hamburgers or other meat-based items. According to an analysis of online menus at every location conducted by financial firm Stevens, the fast food chain addressed its beef shortage in a statement, saying, It is widely known that beef suppliers across North America are currently facing production challenges. We continue to supply hamburgers to all of our restaurants, with deliveries two or three times a week, which is consistent with normal delivery schedules. Some of our menu items may be in short supply from time to time at some restaurants in this current environment. We expect this to be temporary, and we're working diligently to minimize the impact to our customers and restaurants. Joaquin Phoenix and Rooney Mara are speaking out about the factory farming industry amid the coronavirus outbreak and the backlash against wet markets. People are not in a panic in the way that they should be. Like these are very dire times, um, and so I felt like I had to do something. The pandemic is believed to have started at a wet market in Wuhan, China. The vegan couple made the comments in an op-ed published in the Washington Post. China is hardly the only country where live animal markets and other squalid operations are common. Some 80 of them operate within the five boroughs of New York City alone. According to Slaughter Free NYC, a nonprofit group that opposes them, they are near residences, schools, and public parks. But as Phoenix and Mara pointed out, they're a drop in the bucket when it comes to our food system. The real threat is modern factory farming. The couple wrote, Less notorious but much more commonplace threats to public health are the concentrated animal feeding operations scattered throughout the South and Midwest. These factory farms warehouse thousands of animals that wallow in their own waste with limited or no air space. This routinely creates conditions for the proliferation of superbugs and zoonotic pathogens. Last month, Joaquin Phoenix spent a weekend grilling vegan barbecue from Crossroads Kitchen. Due to lockdown measures, the LA-based vegan restaurant has closed for dine-in customers. A few weeks ago, it began offering plant-based meal kits for customers to cook at home. The meal kit includes spicy Impossible wontons, made with vegan meat by Impossible Foods, spaghetti and meatballs, and the grilling kit. The latter, ordered by Phoenix, includes Impossible burgers, homemade Italian-style sausages, smoked barbecue beans, and potato salad. Crossroads Kitchen recently posted on Instagram, We know what Joaquin Phoenix will be grilling this weekend. The Crossroads Grilling Kit. How about you guys? Coming up, a fully vegan hotel is opening in Mykonos, Greece. Olivia Coleman recently helped to deliver vegan meals to London's most vulnerable communities. The Academy Award-winning actor teamed up with plant-based community food kitchen and cookery school made in Hackney. The charity is providing 500 emergency meals per day to people in need during the pandemic. Coleman rolled up her sleeves and helped make 100 meals, which she then helped deliver around Hackney. 
Made in Hackney wrote on Instagram, Olivia Colman came to visit our emergency meal service. It's not every day an award-winning movie star visits your charity program and is not only lovely, but rolls up her sleeves and gets stuck in. In a separate post, the charity added, We're on track to provide 34,080 meals by mid-June. Thank you for helping us make this happen. These are incredible people doing an incredible job. They're volunteering and going to deliver the food. Um, and it's been, it's an amazing project. Veganism is taking over the fast food industry. McDonald's CEO Chris Kamsinki revealed the chain is getting ready to launch vegan options in the U.S. The executive made the comment during an interview with CNBC. Although a launch date and details were not given, he notes that he certainly expects to see plant-based on the McDonald's menu. The international fast food giant has already launched plant-based options at restaurants across the globe, including in Finland, Sweden, Germany, the UK, and Canada. Veganism is also making waves in the hospitality industry. A vegan hotel is set to open this summer in Anomera, a village located in Mykonos, Greece. The Kukumi Hotel features Mediterranean-inspired, all-vegan dishes prepared by chef Angeliki Chirami. The menu boasts a number of raw vegan meals, many of which feature ingredients sourced from the hotel's fruit and vegetable garden. The hotel's website notes, A vegan diet is natural, cruelty-free, and complete. It is a sensible choice for a healthy lifestyle. Our exclusively vegan restaurant with our delicious recipes will challenge you to reconsider everything you believed about food before. That's it for today. What do you think about Iceland shutting down its whaling operations? Let us know in the comments below. Remember to subscribe and hit the notification bell. We'll see you again next week for Live Kindly News.